Hello everyone, I'm Klaus Aranha from the University of Tsukuba and this is Experiment Designs in Computer Science. So in this first video I want to address some of the comments that I received in the last lecture. So let's go. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who answered uh, the survey. We had a total of 54 students that answered the survey. This, I think this is probably the biggest class of experiment designs that I have. I think I have, I've been teaching this course for six years. Usually we have like 30, 35, and this, this year we have 54 students. That's a lot. Um, 10 people did not answer the attendance survey. I want to remind everyone that uh, submitting this survey is a requirement uh, to get credit for this course. So they said the survey is not graded, so there is no right or wrong answer. Or a better way to say, it, there, is, there is a right answer for some of the questions that I ask, but you will not lose points. Uh, I ask questions exactly to know how much you're learning and what I need to improve. So please answer the survey. Also, I also have to check the attendance, and this is how I check attendance. So do not forget to um, answer the survey. One person answered the survey in Japanese, and it's okay if you need to talk to me in, in, in Japanese, like if you need to send an email to ask a question about the class in Japanese, that's okay. But for everything that you have to submit for this class, the survey, the report, and the exam, you need to submit it in English. It's part of the, the requirements for this course. Okay, so of course the, the survey is not graded, so it's a good opportunity uh, for you to practice uh, your English and to practice discussing the topics in, of the class in English. Now, changing a little bit the subject, I asked you to mention like the inspiring scientists, and I'm going to talk about that more in a little bit, but I wanted to highlight one person that mentioned the Ig Nobel Prize. So... The Ig Nobel Prize is actually a very interesting uh, prize. And if you don't know the Ig Nobel Prize, I highly recommend that you search about it. So you probably know the Nobel Prize, which is a prize that is given for scientists who made world-changing discoveries, right? The Ig Nobel Prize is a play on the Nobel Prize. It's a prize for scientists who make research that when you hear about this research said, why? Why is this? It's so weird. So some of the Ig Nobel Prize winners were about people who studied the shape of bananas or how a plastic ball crumbles and things like that. And usually in the beginning, when you look at the Ig Nobel research, first you think, oh, this is really silly. But if you stop to think about it, the research are, are really interesting. So I like this way to think about research. Silly, but interesting and deep. So I highly recommend that you take a look at Ig Nobel Prize. Uh, 12 students, so about 20% of the students are taking this course from outside of Japan. So I will do my best that, so that you can take uh, see all the videos and do everything uh, in time. Uh, we'll have one exception, that is the XM. Um, if you have any problems with the XM, please let me know. Okay, I asked you the list of inspiring scientists. Uh, this year, we had a very wide variety of names. Last year, a lot of people answered a few scientists. This year, I had a bigger variety. So we got the, uh, the most cited scientist was Isaac Newton with three, Albert Einstein with two, Yoichi Ochiai from Tsukuba with two, Stephen Hawking with two, and Gauss with two. And then we had a bunch. We had Neil deGrasse Tyson, we had Babbage, we had Tesla, Schrodinger, von Neumann, Socrates, Tsukuru Manabe, this is the guy that won the Ig Nobel Prize, Kyoshi Mabuchi, Leonardo da Vinci. So I highly, uh, oh, sorry, no, Kyoshi Mabuchi was the one that won the Ig Nobel Prize. Tsukuru Manabe was the one that won the Nobel Prize. So I highly recommend that you pause this and you look at these names and search about them. They are all very interesting people. Uh, they all did very interesting stuff. And by learning about them, maybe that will inspire you for your own research. Okay, now I want to answer specific questions that were made in class, okay? Uh, were made in the, in the feedback. Uh, I received many messages about difficulty with English. Uh, I want to thank everyone 
who does not speak English as a first language. English is not my first language, so I also had difficulty to learn English in the beginning, but I think it's good to make this effort. Um, last week, I said in a different class that the best way to learn a language is to use it. And I hope that you can take this opportunity to use English for something that you really want so that you can improve your ability. Okay? If any part of the class is difficult to understand, please uh, feel free to send me a message and ask, or to come to the uh, office hours and ask, or to go to Manaba and ask. Okay? I'm happy to clarify any part that is hard to understand. Uh, I had one question that was, do you deduct scores for mistakes in English grammar? And the answer is no, I do not deduct any scores for mistakes in English. However, your text is still needs to be clear. You can have mistakes, but even with the mistakes, uh, I need to understand what you're saying. And I will do my best effort to understand. So you do your best effort to write a clear text and I do my best effort to understand what you are writing, okay? If you have difficulty with English, try to write simple sentences. This is my recommendation for you. Focus on the facts. We are talking about experiment, data, and analysis. So focus on the facts of the experiment, focus on the facts of the data, and focus on the facts of the analysis. You don't need to write anything very beautiful or very complicated. Now, another person asked, because I don't have much experimental experience, I don't have any clear ideas about the report. That's okay. A lot of people have difficulty when I say, oh, you need to make an experiment. And they know, I don't know. I don't know what. That's okay. That's normal. But if you think about it, you have done many experiments through your life. For example, when you compare different products to decide which one you like best, that's a kind of an experiment. The only thing that I am asking you is to make that experiment more formally, more carefully. That's the idea. It can be a very simple experiment. You just need to do it carefully. Okay? Um, how many floors? These are some ideas of past years. How many floors before using the elevator is faster than the stairs? I mean, you can climb stairs very fast. Elevators, they stop and they start and they stop. So maybe if you go to the second floor, it's faster by stair. Maybe if you go to the third floor, it's faster by stair. Maybe the fourth floor is faster by elevator. At what point is this difference? This is one experiment. This is a very simple one, but it's one experiment. What is the fastest way to initialize an array of zeros in Python? Uh, do you concentrate more when you're studying with music or with silence? Uh, who in your family can throw a ball the fastest away? There are many, many experiments that we can do on our day by day. So I encourage you to try to see how can you change your life by thinking about it with experiments. Also, please look at the article 101 Ways to Teach Experiment. I linked this article in the material for last week, so I highly recommend that you read it. Okay, there's another question. In one research, it may contain several experiments and this class will only cover the experiment, not the entire of the research. Yes, that's correct. A research contains many experiments. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last class. You do an experiment, from the result, you think of another experiment. From the result, you think of another experiment. From the result, you think of another experiment. That's natural in research. For this class, we are focusing on the experiment. So we want to focus on one experiment. But of course, during your research, you are going to do many experiments. Fine. I googled, final question. I googled geocaching after reading your slides and find it looks so fun. Yes, geocaching is very, very, very fun. Lately, unfortunately, the, the geocache company became a little bit too commercial. So that's a little bit sad, but the idea of geocaching is very fun. So I recommend that uh, you try it. Uh, it's a very healthy hobby. Okay, thank you very much. And in the next video, we're going to actually start the class. This week, don't forget to write your feedback. I look forward to read your feedback and talk about your feedback next week. Bye-bye.